All right, welcome to the fall 2022 semester. This is going to be our first uh, video demo. We're going to be going through exercise one. And you will find it within the Canvas class. The theme of this is to take line art, which is just simple coloring book kind of illustration art, black lines, layer them up together in a process called compositing using a raster program. I'm going to be showing it with Photoshop. We're going to do that in the, in the lab today. But you can also use PhotoP and do this, do this through a browser if you need to work on it extra on your own. My definition of compositing, uh, especially in the context of this project where we're not allowed to make our own images, we have to modify from found images. I call it uh, using other people's pixels. And when we're doing that, it's good to understand usage rights. So our reading for this week that's going to inform all of our compositing in the course, it can be found in the course outline. And let's see. It is in this free wiki book, Digital Foundations, and it's going to be chapter two. And that chapter is all about searching and sampling. How do you find images that are good quality to use? And then how do you understand, this is the important part, how do you understand the usage rights attached to those images? Everything from fair use to creative commons to public domain. And you will come across a lot of stock sites, right? Stock sites also are protected images. But that doesn't mean that every image online is free to use as long as it doesn't have a watermark on it. That's not true at all, right? So that's your recommended reading. We'll be talking more about that later in class for sure. The theme of this jumble is going to be on a banned book of your choice. We have a series of them here. This is a list of them from our campus library. It's a good place to start. If you want to do a book that, a jumble based on a book title that's not on this list, but you, like maybe it's from 2022, you know that it's been challenged or banned, that's fine with me. You just might have to explain how you found it when you present your work. Um, I've done various examples in the past. I really like this book, and I try to recommend it to students. It's fairly recent, called The Hate You Give. It's about uh, police violence, especially in, in communities of color. But I think this time I'm going to do The Outsiders, which is a book I read in middle school. It's all about 1950s greaser gangs and haircuts and switchblades and cigarettes. So that's just fun. Now, once you know your title, the book you're going to do, it's good to do a little bit of research on it so you can think of imagery that might work for it, right? And the outsiders, if I want to do some quick research, I can just Google outsiders. And it's number between 1990 and 1999, the outsiders was number 38 of the top 100 most frequently challenged books. And it's usually because of portrayals of gang violence, underage smoking and drinking, strong language slash slang, and family dysfunction. If our literature was wiped clean of family dysfunction, that would be... That'd be hard for American literature. But so this is our opportunity to make some art, you know, based on some of these challenging ideas. So I recommend two resources for this. I'm going to show you them. Neither is required. As long as you get line art you can use and you understand the rights, that's required. But these are some fun tools you might not know about. One is Google AutoDraw. And it's one of those kind of abandoned Google projects. It's just autodraw.com. But it's got what's called the autodraw pencil. And with the autodraw pencil, if you draw something and it's working correctly, like a knife, if it's working correctly, it will give you suggestions of clip art at the top. So raise your hand if you've used Google autodraw. And is it working? Are you getting the clip art? My, it's gonna, it has to do with like the age of my computer, that sometimes I have to 
tinker with it. But what it will do is it will give you clip art examples up here that look like what you tried to draw. So especially if you're not very confident drawing, this is a great way to get clip art. The other good news is because Google created this project as a public use project, all the clip art that they hired artists to make for it is Creative Commons open, is allowed for everyone to use without having to attribute. We don't have to say we got this from Google AutoDraw. So in the directions, I give some examples of how you can do that. Then the trick is, well, how do you save it? And you can do a targeted screen grab, making it really big on your screens. Or you can simply click under the options and then download whatever you get. So it's fairly intuitive to play with. That's one resource. My favorite resource for compositing, and we're going to go back to it again and again in these first few assignments, is Pixabay. How many of you have used Pixabay? All right, I'm really happy to be able to introduce it to you. There are several uh, kind of Creative Commons web image resources out there. And what's great is they all share resources from each other. So Pixabay is one of these, and it's, it's one that I'm a member of. But if I look up Switchblade Knife, so if I type in Switchblade Knife and I hit Return, it will give me what it comes up with, you know, and this is something that an artist tagged with that term, switchblade and knife. If I just look up switchblade, I might have a little bit more luck. Nope. So if I just look up knife, <laughs> I'm going to have more luck. So this is what chapter two will help you understand as well. It doesn't make sense to just scroll, scroll through millions of images because a lot of those images are too low resolution to use or you're, you don't want those usage rights. So why Pixabay is great is every image here is vetted by other artists and is only approved to go on the site if, it is, if it's high quality resolution, if it's in focus, and if it's tagged the way it should be tagged. So. The problem is there's not a lot of line art here. I see a lot of photos. So the other trick to doing image searching is you want to limit your options. So you'll see here, it says most relevant. This is how it's sorted. It says uh, what type of images. This is all types, but I can limit that just to illustrations if I want to. And that means the artist tagged it with illustration. And when I get to that, I see some line art that's pretty nice, but I can limit it more. I can limit it by orientation, which doesn't really matter to me if it's horizontal or vertical. I'm going to be rotating these things. I can limit it by size, but the thing is I want it as large as possible. And Pixabay, you can't put anything on that's not at least, I think, uh, 2,000 pixels. But color, I can limit it to just black and white resources because that's the kind of line art I'm looking for. So once I see that, I can see a few things that might be useful. This is how I do it. I recommend it. You do not save the image from here because this is just a thumbnail. Instead, you right click on it and you say open image or rather open link in new tab. And that will take you to the actual resource page. And then you can click on free download. And this is actually a vector, which we'll be learning out about in the next exercise, but I don't need it as a vector for this. I'm just going to take it as the largest raster version and download it. Now, in order to be able to download, you do need to log into this. It's free. You just do it with any kind of email account. And Pixabay is something we'll be using for our first few assignments. And it's going to advertise to you a little bit. But these resources are great. And they're what's covered by a Creative Commons open license, what's called a CCO. They call it a Pixabay license. It basically means that all content that's found on Pixabay, as long as it was properly inputted in the first place, is free for any use. We can use these images and sell these images, and we do not need to give attribution to where we got it from. That means we don't need to give credit to anyone. 
and we can make any modifications to these images that we want to. What are we not able to do? Why are these not public domain? It, it asks that we don't redistribute these images or sell Pixabay content or other stock or wallpaper platforms. So they want us to use it and change it in some way if we're going to sell it. We can't just redistribute it, right? That's not true of public domain, but it is true of, of Creative Commons. Yes, Rick. So we're going to do our design first, all in black, and then we're going to be able to replace it with color. So we're going to be posting a black version, and then if you want to do a special effects kind of color version, you can too. But one lesson is, is making sure everything is the same. Uh, Pixabay also doesn't want us to sell unaltered copies. So you, they don't want you to sell exact copies. That's a way it's different than public domain. And they also don't want the images from Pixabay to portray identifiable people in a bad light or in a way that is offensive. That's to avoid, um, what's the term? <laughs> that doesn't have to do with copyright. That has to do with defaming a person. It's, it's a whole other part of the law. And then don't use content with identifiable persons or brands to create a misleading association with a product or service. You're not going to find any you're not supposed to find any logos or any trademarks on Pixabay anyway, but it's asking you not to mess with that. So it's a pretty nice open license. They're just going to go to your downloads folder if you're on a Mac. Again, you'll find that downloads close to your recycling bin. And then if you double click on that in your downloads folder, it will open up in preview and you can see that it fills the screen. If images are going to be used for printing, they should at least fill the screen. Oftentimes, they'll be bigger than your screen. And if we zoom in on it, we can see the pixels. But we don't want to see those too quickly. And it should be nice and clean and, and sharp and in focus. So that's a good quality reference for a switchblade. I kind of like this one too with the wood. Now, I'm not going to use this one. And the reason is because we're doing a jumble and I don't want it to be cropped off, right? So we're trying to find images that we don't have to cut off or crop. Right, other things I associate with the outsiders. Let's see, what about, I doubt that. So a greaser hairstyle in illustrations, black and white. Yeah, they don't have it. But if I look up hair, so I'm looking for, for hair. And I like some of these old illustrations. We want at least five resources. Oh, that's a good one right there. And then I want to find cigarettes. So if I take these, these hair resources and download them, I'm going to download the largest pixel dimension. So remember, they're going to be at least 1,000 pixels hopefully closer to 2,000. Download them. And it's great that they have vectors as an option here, but we're just going to be downloading the raster for this project. And you need at least five, but you can always, I usually always sample or at least save more than I need. But what if you can't find what you need through these two approaches? Then you have to start looking at, at images that you don't have the rights to use commercially or professionally. 
but you do have the rights under fair use as a student. And that's where